So there's several different incidences that can happen. Um, probably the most common is what we call cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. That's where people can get these bouts of recurrent vomiting. Um, it's quite uh, debilitating when that comes on. People are uh, screaming, they're retching repeatedly. Uh, some of the ER doctors have actually started calling it scrometing, which is a combination of screaming and vomiting together because these patients are just coming in just miserable. They're screaming at the top of their lungs. They can't stop retching and vomiting. Often they've been doing it for days. Um, and unfortunately, there's not a lot of our normal antiemetics, in other words, our medications we use to treat nausea and vomiting that are very effective. Um, typically, people will say they get some relief with taking a hot shower. But for the most part, the only treatment is to stop using cannabis. And we see those probably as the most frequent, uh, probably as much as every other day, we'll see a case of those. In fact, I just ran the numbers. I think there were 180 cases for 2018. So pretty close to about an every other day wow. uh, run at those, those people come in. So that's pretty common. Um, the most concerning thing that we see is that people get uh, psychosis from it. So that's what, I really, that's what really triggered me to get concerned about um, all the cases of the psychosis that we were seeing. So a lot of people don't understand that term psychosis. The general lay public would just kind of point to that guy and say, hey, that guy's going crazy. Um, but examples, I mean, I've had people come in, a uh, young guy was had a, on a football scholarship, uh, was at a conference, and then suddenly left the conference, got in his car, was driving 120 miles an hour down the freeway. Uh, couldn't, finally his car broke down by the time somebody caught up to him. He was, when he got to me, he was just speaking complete gibberish, wasn't making any sense. They couldn't get him to keep his clothes on. Um, he actually got in, admitted to an inpatient psych ward, was there for over a week. Um, and I, when I followed him up, at least on day three, still wasn't keeping his clothes on um, and still not making any sense about anything he was talking about. Uh, had another lady that came in, uh, probably mid thirties, mid forties. Uh, had she was com when she got brought in, she was completely naked except for a bathrobe, so no underwear, no bra. Um, completely naked, was bleeding from her head, uh, and kind of covered in blood from the lesions she'd actually separated the tendons in her toe. Apparently, it was found at a loaf local loafing jug. And just to paint the picture, so she gets brought in. She's on this stretcher um, with her legs crossed, kind of arms folded, repeating the Lord's prayer over and over again. And like you know, I come up to her, you know, ma'am, can you tell me your name? She just kept screaming and screaming, our Father who art in heaven, our Father who art in heaven, without any response to anything that I was telling her. Um, she again, uh, uh, she'd actually been there a few weeks ago, or actually a few, few months ago, and had been throwing furniture off of an overpass onto the freeway. Um, and yet at, at that visit, her urine drug screen was only positive for cannabis. At the visit I'm describing, she was positive for meth and cannabis, um, but both of those affecting kind of severe psychosis. Another example, a young teenager uh, had cuts all the way up and down his arm. Uh, I put over 47 stitches in his arm and then did another probably 100 plus steri strips to close it up. He'd just been sitting there with a razor blade cutting his arm. And when I tried to talk to him, he just stared blankly ahead, didn't answer a single one of my questions and didn't move the entire time I sewed up his arm. Um, urine drug screen, only positive for cannabis.